My name's Andy Shaw, I'm the inventor of the Saltori system for structured thinking. What that is, is a system of thought. Basically, the, uh, it's, it basically gives you the freedom from pain of the negative ailments of life. You know, stress, worry, depression, anxiety and all that sort of thing. Basically all of them are mind ailments. So what happens is your mind messes with you and uh, what I do is I show you how to remove them. Uh, and it's of course also the attainment of dreams. So any desires, any dreams, whatever you want. Basically it, it take, it's a system of thinking. So Tory thinking is structured thinking without effort. In other words, this sounds like hard, but in other words, at the moment, what you've got going on is you, you think accidentally. But, you know, it's, uh, it, we think accidentally by mistake. We don't think, you know, our thoughts, you know, trading is perfect because you guys are in a high pressure situation, you're pushing the button on a trade. And that's a, that's a perfect example of all of a sudden, rational, rationality is a problem, right? So what this is, is a new way of thinking. So why do we need a new way of thinking? Because we don't actually have a way of thinking. We all think differently. We all think uh, by accident. We all think it's, it's basically chaotic thinking. There is no structure to what, what's going on in our minds. It's, uh, we think there is. We think we've got a great system. We think, oh yes, right, okay, I'm low on self-confidence, so right, I need to read a book on self-confidence, but that's, that's a default thinking. And then the problem is, if you haven't solved worries, uh, your self-confidence won't work. This is why humans are in so much trouble. They basically have no structure to what they're thinking. There's, there's basically a mess going on, and that's, that's what it is. We are naturally benefits-driven creatures. In other words, what happens is, you know, that people say about greed and selfishness and that sort of thing. Look, we're all about survival. This is exactly what John said. We come out of the ooze and it's all about survival. Yeah, but we thought that was going to be enough. So the, 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 the line John came out with this morning about the 2% of, sorry, 1% of children by the time they've gone through the education system are no longer, uh, are capable of being geniuses. But at the start, most of them are. is so true, yeah? Because our education system doesn't work for the way we like to think. We think it does because it's what everybody does, but it doesn't mean to say it actually works. So the next evolution of uh, thinking is basically uh, this is it, a different way of thinking so that you can effectively have freedom from pain, enjoy what you want in life, basically be able to make rational judgments at whatever you're doing. So if it's a stressful situation, all you're doing is effectively being able to clear your mind and make a decision based on it. Now somebody like Mark I was watching yesterday as an example from a trading point of view. He's able to make a decision without all of the, excuse my me for swearing a little bit, all the bullshit going on. Yeah, you know how the doubts come in and that sort of thing. What I saw, what he would do is he'd look at it and go rationally, no, no trade today. Yeah, there was no emotions involved. He's able to switch off his emotions. This is a, a correct thinking, you know, it's a structured thought. It's taken, I can imagine it's taken a few years to get to it, but he's also had it for a long time. Basically, the structured thinking system is taught in my books, and as I said earlier, if you're, uh, uh, the reason John asked me here, he's very kind to ask me here, is he thinks that my books will be worthy of uh, you buying them so that you can basically become better at thinking and become better at trading. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cover four things. I'm going to give you some statistics. I'm going to give you the odds against success. You know, these statistics are quite fun, you know, because you, you might not have heard of them before. Uh, I'm going to tell you why personal development books haven't worked for you, you know, because it's a case of Sometimes you think, yeah, they're working and that sort of thing. But why they work for the majority? Because this group isn't a standard group. What we've got here is got, you know, some clever people. So if you, you know, you're not a good slice of society. So it's, it's, it's not easy for me to do it in the same way because society as a whole can't make things work, which we're going to cover in a second. I'm going to show you what the problem is and how to remove it. And lastly, if the clicker works, I'm going to show you what prevents you going beyond success. Right? and I'm going to show you what's preventing you getting everything you want from life. All right, so let's get started. Some statistics. Click. Oh, sorry, I forgot this. Short video about me, so you know I've got a bit of credibility.
To make a long story short, here's what happened in the past 10 years. In 2002, I set myself the goal of being a millionaire in two years. I achieved it in just six months and went on to become a multi-millionaire just two weeks later. Success showed up fast and so did the cars. Believe it or not, I picked the colour purple for my first Lamborghini so that I wouldn't get noticed too much. I gave up after that and just collected cars because I liked them. With the boys' toys sorted, it was time to move on to holiday homes. Our six-bedroom home in the New Forest, a villa in Cyprus and a home near Disneyland in Orlando. A car each for mum and dad and a much bigger home for them too. But then after 40 years of marriage, they split up, which meant I got to buy mum another house. And of course, my wife got something very special in her Christmas stocking too. Well, she always did want a Ferrari. Let's not forget business success. I built a company from zero to being worth well over $25 million in under three years. I became the UK's best-selling author on property investment. I wrote this 450-page book, which is considered to be the property investor's bible in under 20 hours. I've taught thousands to make well over $200 million. And that's just the feedback figure. The actual figure would have been much higher. I've sold millions online too. In my first year online, I turned over just shy of $1.6 million. But we got it right a few years later, including one offer where we sold $2.8 million worth in just 67 seconds. Yes, you did hear that right, 67 seconds. Also, the last time I did a seminar, the seats were over $10,000 per seat and they sold out in under seven minutes. And then there's the personal stuff. Long ago, I gave up health in search of wealth and got really, really fat. Then one day I realised I could have wealth and health, so I lost it all and I lost over 140 pounds in seven months. I also have a wonderful relationship with my children, who think somewhat differently to most children. And lastly, but most importantly, I am married to the person I decided one day to spend the rest of my life with. So I sat down and manifested the perfect partner into my life and that was well over 20 years ago. Why am I telling you all about this? Not to brag, I don't need to. But to remind you that success means different things to all of us. But that the system for achieving success in any area is exactly the same thing. And that is a system that is natural to all of us. The difference between people who succeed in life and those who struggle to get anywhere is quite simple. Successful people still have access to their natural success mindset. Those who struggle have lost touch with theirs, so to try and create success without it is impossible. And if success has been elusive to you, then that is what the problem is. What I'm going to explain to you here today is why the problem has arisen and exactly how you can fix it today. Right, going beyond success. Have you ever wondered uh, why there are not more successful people in the world? You know, why is it that uh, one person can succeed and another person can't? Why is it that, you know, what's going on? Why, why can't they do it? You know, why can't people succeed? And it's all to do with their mindset. It's all to do with something that's going on inside their head. <coughs> There's all this education out there and it's all out there to teach people how to, how to succeed. But, you know, all joking aside, the secret is an ex for example, you know, over 200 million people have watched the secret film, uh, the last count. Well, where's all the millionaires? Where are they all? You know, where are all these successful people from these personal development books? So, wh what's going on? You know, if this is, this is how people are supposed to become successful, if they can't become successful by accident, then why aren't we getting more successful people? There's something going on, there's something going wrong in our minds. Because until that success, until we find what's going on, we can't evolve past it. Does anyone here know what percentage of people will become financially successful? You know, uh, financially successful, I define as a net worth of a million dollars, which isn't a lot of money, but it's a case of it's financially successful. Who can tell me what percentage of people it is? 1%. 1%. 5%. Half a percent? Half a percent, okay. The actual figure is far less than that. It's actually 714 to 1. The chance of becoming just worth a mere million dollars, right? Which is 1.14% 1. chance of success. Is that, is that cash or is that, is that assets? assets? 
assets. This is, the, yeah, this is of Wikipedia's figures, right? Basically, Wikipedia, there's about 10 million millionaires in the world and about 7.9 million in the 13 richest countries. But it's, uh, it's a case of that's what the odds are. Because I originally became fascinated about success, as I was saying earlier, that why, you know, why there was only 1% of people <coughs> successful. But when I delved into the statistics, I found that it's far less than that. So it's a case of, right, well, all of these people are spending their entire lives working, doing all this different stuff, and they're failing. They're not getting there. They're not getting the goal. So what's going on? Basically, the failure rate is horrendous, absolutely horrendous, <laughs> right? You know, it's a case of this isn't good, right? But, but people think that this is, this is the way to do it. So it's a case of what we'll do is they go, oh, I can't, can't become successful, right? I'll go and read a book on personal development and that sort of thing. And it doesn't work. The system doesn't work. It's broken, you know? But because that's the only system there is, everyone goes and does it that way. Who knows what uh, one of those is? It's a, a UHNWI is an <coughs> ultra high net worth individual, and it's somebody who's worth over thirty million dollars. Yeah, which is you know I define as very successful. Who would like to know the odds on what the chance of being one of them is? <laughs> right? There's only ninety, just under ninety three thousand of them in the world. Right? Sorry, am I? Sorry, apologies. Hang on, clicker's not working. The odds are 75,188 to 1. Yeah. It's like, and we're following this system to become successful. Yeah? It ain't working. Yeah. It ain't working. You know, it's not the way to do it. You know, unfortunately, it's a case of that's the way everyone's doing it. Doesn't mean it's right. You know, it's just the way everyone's doing it. The odds are less than one uh, less than 0.01%, and you have a 99.999% chance of failing that goal. Right? So if you want to go for that goal, it's not good odds, right? <laughs> you know? So, but uh, you know, it's it's a it's completely achievable goal. It's just a case of, you've you know, doing it. If you're going to copy a system to do it, the current system isn't going to be good enough. So why so few successes? Why is not more people successful? What got me into this was. I, one day, I was, I've said this twice today to people, so I apologise for talking to people earlier about this, but it's something that really got me passionate about success. I, I'd had massive success in a number of areas. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was just, all of a sudden, we, long story short, we had a company, uh, uh, we had about 100, 140 employees and that sort of thing, and uh, everyone said, oh, it's, you're doing so well and that sort of thing. We were making a 2% net margin. Uh, for a, we were on about seven million turnover a year, something like that, and uh, the accountants loved it. And we were like, "This is awful." And they went, "No, no, no. That's what you're supposed to make for the manufacturing industry. That's that's really good. And to have made it in this amount of time is excellent." But of course, it wasn't doing it for us. So I went into, I went off and found out how to make money because it wasn't making me rich. And I went into business to become rich. I didn't want to be poor. I wanted to be rich. And if the business had done it for me, then I would have stayed in that business. But it wasn't what I loved, it was just I was good at it, so I, I did it. Uh, you know, it was a, a lesson that took me a long time to learn in business, is you don't go into a business because you can, you go into business because you, 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 know, you want to, because it's something you desire to do, it's something that fits your life purpose. For a long time in my life, I went into businesses because I could do them. You know, I, uh, started many businesses that basically I shouldn't have gone into, but they were successful at times, you know, failures at others, because failure to, failure as far as I'm concerned, is a case of, if you want to increase your rate of success, double your rate of failure, exactly as uh, Thomas, whatever his name is, the guy from IBM said. It's completely right. You know, I look to fail more often, and this is where you were saying with the trading, it's the same. It's a case of you, you fail fast enough, and as long as you're learning from it, then you develop the system until all of a sudden you're not failing anymore. You know, and that's, it's a painful way to learn but it's actually a very fast way to learn. But why did I, why can I succeed? Why can I do it when other people struggle, really struggled with it? I didn't get it, I, I, you know, it's, it's uh, I couldn't get it into my mind what it was. And a few years ago, uh, it all went wrong for me and it went completely the other way. And it was like all of a sudden, I used to be able to turn, I used to be able to, everything I touched worked. It was success, 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 success. It was just, it was, yeah, this is gonna work, this is gonna work, this is gonna work. And then all of a sudden it went wrong. And when it went wrong, it was a, I got to see the world from the eyes of how unsuccessful people look at it. 
And it was like, oh, this is why people can't succeed, because they're looking at it, they're expecting failure. They're expecting it not to work. They're doubting they can succeed. And it doesn't, you know, all of those thoughts do damage. You know, I cover, you know, if you ask me later, it's not in the presentation, but no thought stands still. So if a thought isn't helping you, it's hurting you. You know, because there is nothing that stands still. So anyway, the reason they can't do it is everyone's got one of these in their head, right? And what this is, is this is a virus, right? And it's in people's minds, right? And you all think you haven't got one, but you all have, right? We've all got it, everyone on Earth. Oh, we didn't used to have it. It's not natural. It's man-made, right? But what happens is, as we go through life, we bring things in, false assumptions, uh, beliefs, you know, things that are wrong. And we bring them all in. And what happens is, inside our mind, it all gets mixed up. And then all of a sudden, out of thin air, this sort of entity is created, which is our ego. And basically, this ego is it's like a... So the best way to describe it is, it sits on your shoulder, and it whispers in your ear, really, really, really bad advice. Yeah? Exactly what Clive said earlier. Oh, don't make that trade. Oh, no, that's not the right thing to do. Oh, yeah, don't do this. Right? And it gives you wrong advice all the time. And we listen to it because it's speaking in our language, because they're using human language, our words sort of thing. So we listen to it. But our gut is telling us, do the trade. The gut <coughs> told you to get there, set that trade up. Your instincts was telling you, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. And then right at the point of pressing the button, it was a case of, the little virus said, oh, I don't think so, doubt, right? And this virus is going on inside your minds. Now, what happens is people go and get personal development books. So they go and learn from a teacher. You know, I'll use John as an example. Uh, not a good example, actually, because you lot seem to be a lot more successful than most, uh, most groups and that sort of thing. But I'll, I'll give another example. Uh, it's the industry, Tony Robbins, yeah? They'll go and learn Tony Robbins stuff, and it's great stuff. You know, all joking aside, guy's excellent at his information. Somebody learns it, and they put it inside their mind. It's, lo it's effectively, people are just loading software onto a computer with a virus. Your mind is like a computer, and it's got a virus. So what people do is they go, oh, I'm going to go and learn this personal development stuff, and they put it into their mind, and the mind rejects it. Yeah? I'll give you an exact example again using Mark. He's got harmonious thought around that trading, yeah? So it's a case of very, very successful around that point. So it's a case of something comes in to shake, you know, what would be uh, a non-harmonious thought. Something's happened, right? He's able to look at it. His mind is to rationalise it, sort it out, and go, oh, yeah, that's no problem. Whereas somebody who's got a virus in their mind, basically, what happens is that this comes in and all of a sudden irrationality comes in and chaos, chaos is reigns. Chaos reigns and basically it, it, it overtakes their mind and they can't think clearly. And so they go off and make silly, silly deductions and suggestions. As, I, as we were talking about with the pink trades, it basically what's happened is chaos has come in and this structured system which is in place has messed up because it's gone to sleep. Yeah? Because we all think we're awake all the time. We're not. We're asleep a lot of the time. You know, which everybody ever wondered why life speeds up. It's because uh, more and more of the time you spend asleep. You know, that's how your body, your body is like a system running billions of calculations every second. And the more and more, it's, it's automatically designed to take things off your plate. So as you, as you age, it takes more and more off your plate. So 90% 90, 90 plus of your thoughts from yesterday are the same as today and that sort of thing. It's, 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 it's designed to do things for you. So, of course, we spend more and more time asleep. And uh, so our lives seem to get faster and faster as we age. They, they age at exactly the same rate, but they just appear to age. It's all about perception. Anyway. So the reason they can't teach success is effectively they are load, you are taking their information and putting it on top of a computer with a virus. Yeah? That's it. That's why success books don't work. That's why these books can't get through to people, because they're not accounting for the, the virus. And what's happened is they're all successful people. So what happens is they're teaching success, they're teaching whatever it is, whatever it is, from a position of success. Whereas people are learning it from a position of anti-success. So they're taking this successful information, they're putting it in, the virus is going, <laughs> we're not having any of that, or worse to the lot, it actually says, yeah, yeah, bring that information in, because you know it's the right thing for you. Because it knows that it's going to, you know, as a, was in uh, Yes Prime Minister years ago, uh, Sir Geoffrey said, 
uh, you've got to, oh, we've got to get, we've got to get behind this motion. We've got to get be behind it. Well, we don't want to do it. No, no, but we've got to get behind it, because if we can't get behind it, we can't stab it in the back. Right? So you've got to be behind it to stab it in the back. Well, that's what the virus does to you. The virus convinces you that you've got to, yeah, 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 bring this information in. And what it is, is you're bringing in knowledge and, you know, good wisdom, but you can't actually apply it, because your mind won't let you apply it. You know, so it's a case of unless you can apply it, knowledge without application is worse. It's actually destructive because then you're entering, God, this, I'm, I'm going off on other tangents, you're entering the world of uh, knowing things. Right? And then it's a case of when you know something, you, you think you know it. So you, you completely remove it. You don't, need, you don't think you're going to need to do it. You just switch off to it. But the, the successful people, they have clear, harmonious thoughts around that subject. Now, they can be a failure at other areas of their life. You know, you could, we've all seen uh, billionaires who can't hold a relationship together. And this is all to do with their natural success mindset. They are successful around that area. You know, they can hold off the, the bad thoughts and that sort of thing about when they go to their home life and they've, you know, they're, they're, their kids hate them and that sort of thing. They, ca they can't hold it together there, but they can hold it together around business. And this is all to do with uh, their mind's a mess around certain areas, but it's not around another. So a successful person, basically, they are... Uh, they have non-chaotic thoughts about the area they're successful in. But the reason they can't succeed th in the main is they're only trying to solve part of the problem. The real problem the, uh, the personal development world has is, and self-help and anything like that, it's like learning, it's like I said a bit earlier, you learn self-confidence, but if you, you learn self-confidence, so you're going, Right, I'm going to go and learn self-confidence and you go and step into it uh, and you learn self-confident and you walk away from it and you look back and it's, you've lost your self-confidence. It can be gone in, you can take two months to learn and be gone in an instant. And this is because your mind and all your thoughts are all connected. Yeah, if you think of your mind like a, a body of water, like a pond, and what happens is as you go through life, you, you start off and your, life, your, your pond is completely crystal clear. There's no, there's no dirt in it, it's perfect water. And what happens is you've got this flow of water coming in, which is your life experiences, and you've got people coming up to you and they're, they're pouring water into your pond because they're giving you advice, parents, school teachers, friends, peers, and all that sort of thing. And basically, at some point along the way, you go and you wake up, and it's a case of all of a sudden you become aware that you're, you're around, and you, well, hang on a minute, what, what bad advice are you giving me, and that sort of thing. But basically, now you've got a pretty muddy pond of water, and it's, it's a bit of a mess. And so you're now making decisions with that mess. So you think, right, I'm going to learn self-confidence. I'm going to learn how to cure my fear. All right? I'm going to cure my fear of whatever. Right? So you, you, you get that little area of the pond, which is all your thoughts, and those thoughts are effectively governing your life. You go, well, I'm going I'm to fix that area. So you fix it. You turn around. What happens? The water's polluted it again. So it's, it's a mess. It's, it's a case of you can't fix part of the system. And that's what personal development attempts to do. They, they attempt to fix part of the system, which is why a thinking system is needed, so that it's all cleaned. Your whole thoughts are cleaned. What, what I was saying earlier, the, what it does is it, it totally changes your mind so that all of a sudden you're clear again. You're not in any, there's no stress, there's no worries, there's no fear, there's no anxiety, no, there's no depression. You know, one of the things I'm most proud of is the, the number of people I've, helps solve depression because it's a case of you know you, you do this system and you're not depressed anymore it's virtually impossible to be depressed because would you would you agree with that because it's it's a case of all of a sudden it just clears your mind of it right but the funny thing is successful people teach you that basically you want to become successful yeah you've got to become this person now you already were right you already were this person you already were it a long long time ago if that clicks. When you learn to walk, you were naturally successful. Yeah? Do you know how hard walking is? Walking is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. You think what you're doing with trading now is hard. That's nothing compared to how hard walking was. To walk, you've got to fall over. And you've got to think about it. That, that kid f fell over. Bang, bang. How many times did he fall flat on his face? If you fell flat on your face in what you're doing now, how many times could you pick yourself up? Picked himself up. We all did. Right? Now, just for a second, imagine if you gave, uh, you said to everybody, right, we took away everybody's walking privileges. That's it. You can no longer, none of you can walk. Right? 
you've now got to learn to walk again. Well, the stop to be in is wheelchairs, right? Because the world is going to be full of wheelchairs. Because adults could never learn to walk. They're not clever enough, right? Because they've lost their natural success mindset. Now, the kid, when it was very young, when all of you are the same, what happened was you're sitting on, you're laying on your back, and all of a sudden your mum goes off and you think, where the hell is she going? God, what's she doing? God, I want to be able to do that. Right? So all of a sudden, you know what you want. I want to be able to do that. And then eventually, you, oh, you're sitting up, and there's all these adults walking around. There's all these examples. And they're there, they're going, I could walk. The kid's going, oh, I'm having that. <laughs> I want to be able to walk. Right? One of the biggest problems humanity's got is none of us really know what we want. Yeah? So when somebody goes, oh, I want to go, uh, you know, can anybody here book a, book a flight to America? Who can book a flight to America? Can you? Well, you go into a travel agent, he's going to want a bit more information than that. You can't book a flight to America. You've got to book a flight to Dallas on the 2nd of May, and you've got to leave first thing in the morning. You've got to know exactly to book a flight to America. If you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? You know, this is the problem. Everyone's like this. I, with, with me, I know, I know where I'm going. I'm going there, exactly there. That's, that's what I do. I'm laser focused, like he was. Absolutely laser focused. I know exactly where I'm going. Funnily enough, and I go like this. I go, and I keep going until I get there. This is what the world does. Uh, yeah, I want to go over there. Oh, I want to go over there. Right. Actually, that looks. Uh, where, where was I? And that's everybody. Everybody does that. Nobody's got any focus. You know, the biggest problem in the world is people don't know what they want. People are, people are asleep. People don't know what they want. Right? There's another one as well, but I've forgotten it off the top of my head. But that's it. That's why you can't succeed, because you've lost that natural success mindset. So what I do, you know, what, why, what's gone wrong, basically? Where did this go? What's changed? Why did the one-year-old you know more about success than you do today? What's changed? I mean, come on. You spent you know, 30, 40 years being educated. What's going on? Why hasn't it worked? The one-year-old you would know exactly what it wanted to do with life. Most people haven't got a clue. You know, so it's a case of what do you want? Why did the one-year-old one -year you get it? Right? We are taught what to think. That's our training. Yeah? Right, OK. Accountants have been mentioned half a dozen times today. It's a case of you're taught what to think. Right, this is how you do it. This is how you solve this. This is how you solve this. This is how you solve this. You're not taught how to think. Because it's default. Everybody thinks it's, nobody's done anything. There's nothing to teach how to think. So it's a case of what happens is chaos reigns. So the thought goes in, and it's left to our own interpretation. You know, so <laughs> when you look at the markets and it's chaos going on, it's a case of, because everybody's thinking differently. But you've got patterns where the market will all think <coughs> chaotically the same way. That sort of thing. So we all think chaotically as a default. And until you stop thinking chaotically, until you can control what's going on inside your mind, you can't think correctly all the time. Now what happens is, the, the experience I've seen the guys do, is they, uh, they can look at a situation comes up and they're able to not think chaotically. Right? So there's a structure to the thinking. This is, why a this is why we love buying systems, because we all want a system. The problem is that when you're loading that system, so you're loading Mark's system onto your mind, it's a case of, well, your mind's thinking chaotically. So are you making the right moves? Is your, are, you, are you sure? I'm losing my voice here. Are you sure you're making the right moves? We don't know. This is why I created Sautori. Now, all it is, is quite simply, all it is, is a system to organise the chaos. That's all it is. All I've done is I've gone out there and gone, that works, that works, that works, that works, that don't work, right? And I've taken the best bits and I've put them into, as Clive rightly said this morning, a manual. And I've made it so it's a case of, I've taken the, the ancient wisdom and basically made it practical. So it's a case of, it's easy. The problem is, it's like I'm a, uh, I love the works of Lao Tzu and that sort of thing. And you read it and it's like, wow, 
incredible, absolutely incredible information, but it's totally impractical. You cannot use it, you cannot apply it into your thought structure for the day. You know, you can look at it and think that's really clever, but what's the use of that? Knowledge without application is useless. So it's and, and it, uh, mostly destructive. So what it is is it's a case of it's just thinking. You just control your thinking anyway. So what's going beyond success? I was at a seminar uh, a while back, and I sat there watching this very successful guy who's a success by most people's standards, and he turns over. Uh, He's been turning over for about five years plus, probably in the region of 18, 19 million pound a year. So he's a success by most people's standards. Very low cost business, so it's a very, very high profit business. You know, accountants would love this sort of business, it would seem impossible to them. Um, and to everybody else around him, he looks a complete success. I sat there and I, I was sitting there and I wasn't really paying attention to, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't really thinking much about it. I was just looking at what was going on because he put himself up there. And uh, I'm looking at it thinking to myself, he's stuck. He can't get past his current level. And I looked at it, I thought, oh, right, yeah. Ah, oh, this, and as I, so I sat there and watched him. And I saw as his mindset blocks were coming out. You see, the problem is that we all have these blocks in our mind about, oh, we don't think we can uh, become worth a million pounds or two million pounds. And we have a, we have a mental block that's been created by this virus. And so we've got, we've, we're limited. We are effectively living in a box. And it might be his box happened to be 17, 18 million pounds worth of turnover a year. But it, the box could be 30,000 a year. Right? He's living in that box. So I looked at it and thought, ah, he's doing this wrong. He's doing this wrong. And I saw how I could easily take his business and go, uh, right, well, take that mindset block out, take that mindset block out, and do these things, and your business will be 100 million a year. And so I wondered why successful people can't get beyond success and that was it. People have got, it doesn't matter that they're already successful, they have mindset blocks. You know, athletes are a, a prime example and great athletes are able to, you know, Muhammad Ali is, a, is, a, is my favourite example. He was able to take defeat, come back from it again, take defeat and come back from it again. The only person ever to regain the world championship three times running. You know, the great athletes it's a case of they can switch themselves back on. You know, if you take Lewis Hamilton as an example at the moment, he's struggling to switch himself back on. You know, if I worked with, with him, it would be a case of, yeah, I can fix that in no problem at all because I can see what his problems are. And he can't see them because successful people still have these mindset blocks as well. And so that's why, you know, I look forward to working with, uh, I'm very fortunate to be working with somebody in the sports world. I should be working with some sports guys soon. Not to make lots of money, just to, basically because I quite like it, you know, I like going to Formula One. Beyond success is all about maximising your, e your effort. You know, we're all here and we're all doing this stuff, but are we achieving all we can achieve? Yeah. We don't know what we can achieve. Now, that's the problem. We all think we do, but we don't actually know what we want. We don't actually know, do we want to do this? Yeah, so be going beyond success is all about finding out what you want from life and then basically maximising your effort to achieve that rather than going around in circles and not doing anything. The reason people rush in life is they don't know what they want. So they're too busy rushing, and they have to try and go somewhere to get it. So they can't do it. So that's it. That's all I've got to say today. Uh, if I've, uh, basically, if, uh, there's a special discount on the uh, promotion, 25% uh, discount on the books that I've put up for John and that sort of thing. Uh, if anybody wants it, it's there, basically. Yeah? Thank you.